The K in the K-code part of a 289 Mustang is much more than just the engine, and we'll show you what it means. The Ford Mustang was a wildly popular car ever since the day they introduced it back in 64 and a half. And by the end of that year, Ford added the fastback roofline in addition to the notchback and the convertible. And ever since then, uh, the fastback Mustangs have been the stuff of legends. It's hard to go to a car show or even drive down the street in one of these things and not attract a lot of attention, especially when it's in a color like this week's car. Uh, this is color code number five on a 1966 Mustang fastback. It's called Signal Flare Red and it doesn't get any more accurate of a name than that. I mean, this car really stands out. One of the reasons why we like this car so much is the code in the VIN uh, of the fifth position is the letter K, and that means it was born with the 271 horsepower K code, 289 cubic inch, Hypo V8 engine. You could get a couple different engines in Mustangs back in the day, uh, but the top dog for 66 in the small block variety was the 289 Hypo. Ford added the 289 Hypo option uh, to make the Mustang more of a sports car performer than just something that looked cool. And it consisted of a 10 and a half to one compression V8 with a lot of little parts that made up a pretty neat package. Uh, there's an Autolite 600 CFM four barrel carburetor sitting on top of a cast iron intake manifold. Now, the K-code cylinder heads were cast iron and did have screw-in rocker studs over the regular press-in variety. It's got a more aggressive flat tappet mechanical camshaft and uh, coupled with that higher compression ratio was one of the key elements for this thing being able to make a little more power. The exhaust system consisted of some almost header-like uh, cast iron exhaust manifolds and by 66, this car had a dual exhaust going all the way back. And there's a few other little things on the engine, like a dual point distributor for a hotter spark and uh, a more reliable spark up at higher RPM, which is where this car was meant to live. Uh, there are special pulleys on the K-Code. Even the water pump is a little different because the internals have fewer veins, which are designed to produce less drag at higher RPM. This thing made 271 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 312 foot-pounds of torque at 3,400 RPM. The bottom end of that K-Code engine was also reinforced to be able to handle the rigors of high RPM usage. Uh, they did this with uh, a heavier duty two-bolt main cap. Uh, the rod caps were held in place with 3 8 inch rod bolts, which were a little bit bigger than the standard 5 16 rod bolts. It had a stronger crankshaft, and the harmonic balancer was special, as was uh, a counterweight on the front of the crankshaft, all to keep this thing running smooth when you spun it up to high RPM. And speaking of high RPM, uh, one of the other interior facets of this car that made it unique was the optional rally pack tachometer that was mounted on the steering column. Uh, for the K-code options, this went to 8,000 RPM as opposed to the regular 6,000 RPM V8 tachometer. These early Mustang Fastbacks were insanely popular because they looked so good. I mean, that Fastback window is really trick, the louvered panel on the top of the quarters. This one has the GT package, which puts the stripe on the bottom and the styled wheels. And when you couple that with the performance of the K-Code modifications, I mean, it's just a home run. Now, this particular car is also wearing the GT equipment package which gave it a set of black GT stripes, some of the GT badging, uh, the fog lights and the grill bar and the grill, uh, and it also has the black pony interior, and again with that rally pack gauge package. It's an automatic car. Uh, in 66, you could finally get an automatic behind a K-Code car. The earlier ones were all uh, four-speed and three-speed manuals. Uh, in this case, we've got a wood face dashboard and a wooden console and a lot of wood accents going along with that black pony interior. So it looks to be a very nice car inside, uh, not just a stripped down version made to go fast. When you ordered a K-Code car, you got a lot more than just the high performance engine. Uh, every part of this car has been massaged a little bit to make it a better performer. The suspension is unique. Uh, Ford increased the spring rates, both on the front springs and the rear springs to give them a little more compliance. Uh, these are specially valved shock absorbers. 
The front sway bar is unique to this car and a little larger diameter to give this a little better cornering ability. This car is wearing the styled steel chrome 14 by 6 inch wheels and a white striped tire. In 66, the standard equipment tire uh, actually had a double red stripe, but there was an optional single white stripe available, much like the ones you see on this car. Another interesting thing about K-Code cars is this is the first time the Ford 9-inch rear axle assembly was seen in a Mustang. Uh, Ford knew that people were going to drive these things hard, so they put the 9-inch axle assembly, which was much stronger than the standard axle. Uh, this car has a 3.5 to 1 rear gear in its 9-inch. Ford built lots and lots and lots of V8 Mustangs, but the K-Code is a little bit different. Uh, for 1966, they made just over 5,400 of them total. Uh, the convertibles are a little more rare. There, uh, there are some of both in the Brothers collection. In fact, if you go to the MuscleCarTheWeek.com website, you can see another feature we've done on a 67 K-Code convertible, which was the last one produced on the San Jose line. So it does seem like, you know, you go to a car show, you see lots of uh, V8-powered Mustangs. But next time you see one, take a look at the VIN and see if there's a letter K in the fifth position, you're looking at an original K-Code Mustang. So when you see the total picture of all the elements that make up the special K, you understand why they're so popular with collectors. We've got more pictures of this car on our website at MuscleCarTheWeek.com and our Facebook page, too. And don't forget, the YouTube channel allows you to subscribe so you'll never miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week.